All right. I've heard a lot of speculation on what it was that was said, who said what, about whom, with the incident of Skinny Jaro City killing Fat Shorty from Jaro City after he accused him of snitching. So, we're going to look directly at the reports, the official reports from the case file, and we're going to see exactly what was said and from whom and about whom. As you can see here, this is pertaining to the Carl Spencer uh, homicide incident. And it states here, on Halloween of 2018, the cops interviewed an inmate at the county jail named Vance Kean. Kean Vance, whichever way you want to say it. Vance relayed that he had info regarding a couple of murders that he would to share with the cops. Vance told the cops about the following murders. The one case number is 515262, which is the Carl Spencer murder. Vance related that while walking eastbound down 60th from King Drive with Rayson Sean, a.k.a. Little B, Jalen Strong, Jaja, and Carlton Archer, a.k.a. Tutu, it was there they encountered an individual named CJ, who they believed to be an affiliate with the 600 fraction of BDs. Vance related that Tutu and Little B both ran towards CJ, firing handguns, striking and killing him. Then he proceeds to tell him about a case, ID number 160914, which is the killing of Sherrod. It says Vance relates that he was down the block as an eyewitness when Rodney Stewart, a.k.a. Boss Trail, shot Sherrod, a.k.a. Sherrod Liggins. Vance relates that there is a wooden gate and that Trail shot Sherrod through a gap in the gate. Now, there are more to this on some other documents in this case file, and I'll get to those in a minute, but for those of y'all that just want to see the highlights, that's as far as Skinny goes, which Skinny is Vance. But, to my surprise, that wasn't all that I found. And again, you can see the case numbers and that he told about and who did it right there. Then I saw an interview done with Darrell Rhymes on November the 1st, 2018. So this is the next day. It says the cops was approached by Cook County investigator Phillips regarding an inmate he had interviewed named Rhymes Darrell. Investigator Phillips related that Rhymes was willing to talk to the cops concerning the ongoing conflict between Jaro City GDs and Oblock BDs. So he came back four days later on November the 5th. The cops met with Darrell Rhymes at the Cook County Jail. Rhymes is a self admitted member of the Jaro City GDs. Rhymes related that he was has info on the following murders. Case number 515262, which is to Carl Spencer, relates he was told later in the evening by Little B, aka Rayson Shaw, and by Tutu, aka Archer Carlton, that they shot and killed CJ from the 600 BDs. He also proceeded to tell him about case 548795. 
He related that he was a witness to the murder of Katoon, a.k.a. Edward Riley. He states that Little B, a.k.a. Rayson Shaw, entered Parkway Gardens through the rear and walked through towards King's Drive where he approached the victims and began shooting Rhymes was and wherever it was because they redacted the signature of the cop over here. It ended up redacting what else Rhymes said, but it appears that he's saying that he was somewhere standing where he could see what happened. So on this event he is telling on the two other offenders with Carl Spencer's case and as well as Patoon's case. Now, if we want to look at the other documents, then hang in there with me. All right, just to be clear, this case file is 230 something pages long. Much of which is duplicated many times over because every time they talk to a new witness, they have to reprint all the previous documents. So how to find each individual thing. But here, I've saved y'all some time. I am showing that this homicide case 515262 is what they were discussing and that on November the 13th of 2018 they had Skinny do uh, be a witness for a lineup. You can see the six pack of the one set and another six pack here. And the results says that he was able to identify Carlton Archer, two, which is 2 2, and Rayson Shaw, which is Little B, as being the offenders in the murder of Carl Spencer. Again here, it says that he signed the advisory form and he signed ours. There's one photo array of with Carlton and one with uh, Little B. And then it says, uh, the summary notes, it says, the detective was assigned as a blind administrator to conduct the photo array of, with witnesses, Keon Vance, which is skinny, Detective met with Vance. Vance read the photo lineup advisory form. Vance declined to have the photo array audio videotaped. Vance signed the appropriate lines on the advisory form. Detective presented Vance with the photo array number one, which is a six pack. After viewing the six pack format, Vance positively identified Carlton Archer as one of the shooters. The photo array was subsequently inventoried. Then the detective asked Skinny to look at the next six pack of photos and it says he positively identified Little B as one of the shooters. So there you have that. All right. So after they did the lineups and Skinny identified Little B and Tutu. They did a supplemental document stating that they were both deceased. With Little B, they call it a justifiable homicide, which I've seen the records, I've seen the videos, the cell phone videos, and everything, and I'm still going to call bullshit on that one. Because... The gun's way over here by the fence, and the person is shot in the back, way at the other end of the gangway. How are you saying that it's justifiable that he pointed a gun at you, so you shot him seven times in the back when his body is at the other end of the block? But anyway, then it says uh, Tutu was killed in a homicide, 
November of 2011. So these are the, I'm not going to read every line of this, but uh, what was entailed when it talks about on Halloween, how the detective was informed by the cops that there was an inmate named Keon Vance, which is skinny, told him that he was an eyewitness to the murder that occurred in 2011. Uh, skinny spoke with the detective about the specifics of the homicide and discovered that Skinny was talking about the murder of Carl Spencer, which was from September 26 of 2011. All right. And it says, uh, basically it was saying uh, he was walking with little B and Tutu and stated that also walking with the group was a guy named Jaja that they were walking up to 61st and King Drive when they saw CJ, who's a member of the 600 fraction. They, uh, Little B and Tutu were both armed with handguns and this, as soon as they saw CJ, they ran in his direction. Uh, they went towards him as CJ attempted to run away. They started shooting at him and they struck him and he fell to the ground. And they then fled on foot. He said that, Skinny said to the detective that he really did not know the other guy that was with the group named Jaja, but he knew that Jaja was killed shortly after this incident. Skinny stated that he and the people walking with him were all members of the gangster disciple Jaro City Fraction. And he told the detective that he'd be willing to talk to the cops more about this matter, which on November the 5th, we find out that the detective, same detective, talked to Darrell Rhymes about the murder of CJ because he was an inmate on unrelated charges. Rhymes had previously spoken to an investigator who in turn had informed Matthews that Rhymes was willing to speak to him about the murder of Spencer. Rhymes related the following. Rhymes stated that he's a member of Jarl's City Street Gang, a fraction of the Gangster Disciples. Rhymes stated that he met with Little B and Tutu on the evening that CJ was murdered. Rhymes stated that he knows Little B and Tutu and that they had told him that they shot and killed CJ earlier in the day and that they were going to leave town. Then on November 13th of 2018, they went back to talk to Skinny again. That's when they ended up doing that lineup. But when they went to go talk to Rhymes, he said that he didn't want to talk anymore. He already gave whatever information he was willing to give. And so when they took Skinny back in another room again, doing that lineup, he went into a little bit more neat detail saying that uh, CJ was a black disciple belonging to 600, that he grew up with CJ and that most of Skinny's family members were members of the same street gang as CJ. Although Skinny identifies himself as a member of Jaro City. Skinny stated that on the day that CJ was murdered, Skinny was walking in the area of 62nd and Vermont, Vernon, I'm sorry. I noticed that every time he talks, he's changing it 60 to 61st to 62nd. But anyway, he was walking with some of the guys. He stated that everyone with him was members of the Jarl City gang. So now he's implementing the whole gang almost. Uh, stated that the group was walking towards the store located at 61st and King Drive. And when they got there, they saw CJ on the 6,000 block of Vernon. Skinny stated that he was walking with Little B and Tutu and Jaja. Um, 
Then he says he thought that Jaja was possibly dead. Skinny stated that Shaw goes by Little B and Archer goes by Tutu. He says on the day of the murder, he saw Shaw and Archer both carrying guns and added that the area of 61st and King Drive, several rival gang were was several rival gangs and that it's not safe to walk around in that area because most of that area is controlled by the 600 fraction. Vance stated that it appeared that Spencer had just exited a building and was standing on the sidewalk unaware of Vance's group. Presents a sh presented a sor short distance away, Vance stated that Shaw and Archer began running towards Spencer. Spencer saw that Shaw and Archer were running towards him and he turned to run away. Vance stated that as Spencer started running away, Shaw and Archer began shooting at Spencer. Vance stated that Spencer ran northbound on Vernon, followed by Shaw and Archer. He stated that he followed behind Shaw and Archer, walking quickly on the east sidewalk of Vernon. Vance stated he did not know where Jaja went to after the shooting started. Vance stated that as Spencer reached the corner of 60th Street, he appeared to have fall to the ground. Vance stated that Shaw and Archer continued to shoot at Spencer. Vance stated that as he reached the area of 60th, he could see that Spencer had fallen down and was lying on the sidewalk. Vance stated that he saw Archer and Shaw run up on him, referring to Spencer on the sidewalk, and both continued to shoot Spencer while he was on the ground. Vance stated Little B just shot him, then to two. They were almost standing right over him. And then he, they said that they all took off running eastbound on 60th after the shooting. Vance stated that he turned and ran back southbound. And that when he spoke with the two later that night, they told him that they were going to leave Chicago for a while because they feared that people had seen them do the shooting because of it occurring in the daytime and that the people might tell the police. Then he went in and he did the lineups and identified the two shooters. Uh, and then we're gonna see. Those are family testimonies. So now it says, in conclusion, it, it is the contention of the reporting detectives that this investigation was proven to the satisfaction of the Chicago Police Department that on September 26, 2011, Carl Spencer was shot and killed by Rayson Shaw and Carlton Archer on 60th Street. The cops learned that during the course of this investigation that those two were both carrying handguns and approached him. And when he attempted to run away, they shot him, killed him, causing his death. The shooting appeared to be gang related since they were members of Jarl's City and the other one was 600. An eyewitness, which is skinny, came forwards and told his information. And November of 2018, Darrell Rhymes also came forward. Say, stating the same thing was able to be able to confirm it then it says uh, December 2018 the cops spoke with three people all three of these individuals stated that they had heard from multiple people that Rayshon Shaw was shot and killed shot and killed Carl Spencer now then it says, uh, that's when they learned that both of the offenders were deceased. And it talks about them and the case number. So therefore, it's exceptionally cleared and closed due to the death of the offenders. Now, let me show y'all something real quick. Alright, um, as you can see here, you can tell where I've connected different cases with this one case together by all the different case IDs that were popping up within this incident report. Um, they have
God has name listed wrong, but I've been able to find out his true identity and what happened to him. So keep your eyes open. I'm going to be coming back with the video, letting everybody know who he was and what actually took place and what's become of his, the offender that ended his life.